Russia's President Putin has launched his election campaign today, which could see him stay in power for at least another six years. The election in March comes as the war in Ukraine continues. Today, Russia and Ukraine have exchanged prisoners of war, with both sides returning around 200 soldiers and some civilians, according to authorities there. In a moment, we will have a special report from our correspondent with the latest from the front lines in eastern Ukraine. But first, our Russia editor Steve Rosenberg was invited to today's presidential campaign launch in Moscow, a star-studded affair near the Kremlin. For Vladimir Putin, a standing ovation was all but guaranteed. From an audience packed with supporters who want him re-elected, Russia's president. We were allowed in to watch the campaign event. Mr Putin used the occasion to claim that it was a US-made missile that had shot down the Russian military transport plane last week in southern Russia. The Ukrainian authorities had mentioned that they want an international investigation into this. That's what we're asking for. And we insist that an international investigation is carried out. But there are no international organizations willing to do this. There were pop stars and cosmonauts, VIPs for Vladimir. Their chance to praise Putin. He's extraordinary leader. Extraordinary. And an opportunity to attack the West. Stop picking on us, trying to trying to dissolve Russia, trying to dis destroy Russia. But, uh, uh, Russia. The West is not trying to destroy Russia, and the West did not invade Ukraine. It was Russia that took the decision to attack Ukraine. The West doesn't want bad relations with Russia. You are so old and so naive, or you're lying. I suspect that the idea behind all of this and all this celebrity support is to show us that candidate Putin is in a league of his own, Premier League Putin. But keep in mind, he runs the league. This is his political system, his rules of the game. Vladimir Putin's most vocal critics have long been relegated. They're either in exile or in prison. Former TV journalist Yekaterina Dunsova had tried to get on the ballot to challenge President Putin. She was calling for peace in Ukraine, the release of political prisoners and a humane Russia. The authorities barred her from running, claiming her paperwork wasn't in order. I think the political system here sees me as an alien object and doesn't know what to do with me. Because I appeared out of the blue, the system doesn't understand who I am, so it's decided to keep me out of harm's way. Yekaterina lives in Rzhev, 140 miles from Moscow. Many here tell me they see no alternative to Vladimir Putin. The Kremlin has helped engineer that by removing any potential rivals, any real challenges from the political stage. A new president, Ilya says, might not cope with the burden of governing. But someone experienced like Putin could develop our country even in the difficult situation we're in. There's no one else, says Lydia. Maybe Putin will find someone sometime, but he'll be ruling for a long time yet. Perhaps that's why there's little excitement here about the election. There will be other candidates. But Russians already know who'll come out on top. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Russia. Well, intense fighting continues in Ukraine along the sprawling front line. For months, Russian forces have been trying to capture this strategic town, Avdivka, near Donetsk in the east, a town that Ukrainians see as a symbol of resistance. It is severely damaged, yet hundreds of civilians remain there living in desperate conditions under relentless Russian bombardment. A special police unit is trying to help the last people out, many elderly women. From that town, our correspondent Abdu Jalil Abdu Rasulov has this report on the evacuation attempts. Evacuation from Avdivka is literally a matter of life and death. Policemen are running out of time to save this wounded woman. 
And not only because she is bleeding heavily. A Russian drone drops a grenade aiming for their car. It just misses. Hurry up! A drone is hovering above. An officer shouts. Gennady and Dmitry's job is to help civilians facing daily bombardments and airstrikes. They are the White Angels, a special police unit in Avdiivka, a frontline town in eastern Ukraine. They gave me their footage from the past month inside the town. It shows how people survive in desperate conditions. The town is being razed to the ground, and yet some residents are still willing to stay. Gennady begs this old lady to leave the town. This is her answer. Let me die here, she says. In some cases, they use the help of a person's relatives. And sometimes it works. We've come here and they're refusing to go, he says. Mom, please go. The voice on the other end begs the woman. What if dad dies after we leave? What will I do? She asks. Eventually, the woman's daughter manages to convince her to leave. Opportunities to escape are slipping away. Small Russian groups have already entered the southern outskirts of the town. An evacuation from there is no longer possible. Ukrainian troops are desperately trying to stop Russian attacks around Avdiivka. But they are running out of supplies as military aid has decreased. As a result, there are huge shortages of ammunition, guns and spare parts. This is the German Berger Panzer and its main purpose is to evacuate damaged armored vehicles from the front line. Its track and road wheels are broken, but because there are not enough spare parts, this group has to scavenge. They're taking the track from the other vehicle and putting it on this one. For now, the Ukrainian forces are holding on in Avdivka. But those residents who refuse to leave the town may soon no longer have a choice. Abdujalil Abdurasulov, BBC News, Eastern Ukraine.